Howdy folks! I've got a short video for you today that will allow me to put off tearing down the setup for my April Fool's video for just a little bit longer. Don't judge me, that crap is really heavy. Anyway, a viewer named Nailson Wehite asked me to explain the graduations on various types of indicators. Let's look at some indicators and see if we can clear this up for him. The first thing you're going to want to do when you grab an indicator of any kind is look right here on the face. This is telling you what each graduation is, in this case, one thousandth of an inch. It works this way for all indicators, no matter the type, in both inch and metric. Sometimes you'll find another legend on the face that shows the travel of the indicator. On this one, that's one inch. You'll also often have a secondary hand that shows where you are within the travel of the indicator. It can be a circular dial like these, or it can possibly look fan-shaped like on this 2-inch travel indicator and on my inner rapid dial test indicator. However it looks, it helps keep track of how many rotations the dial has made. Once you know what each graduation represents, it's easy to figure out what the numbered lines mean. In the case of this thousandths indicator, every numbered line is ten thousandths of an inch. This one's graduated in half thousandths, so every numbered line is five thousandths of an inch. On my tenths indicator, the numbered lines are every thousandth. I don't actually have any metric indicators handy, or I'd show you those too. The type of indicator doesn't necessarily tell you what the graduations will be. Drop type dial indicators like this could be graduated in thousandths, half thousandths, or tenths of a thousandth although thousandths is definitely the most common setup for this particular flavor. In metric versions, you'll most often find them in hundredths of a millimeter, although one and two micron indicators are pretty easy to find as well. Dial test indicators like this are similarly found with a variety of graduations, with half thousandths and hundredths of a millimeter being the most common in each, but tenths and one and two micron versions are hot on their heels. This is the type generally used for dialing parts in, and for most of that work, you'll find the coarser graduation is sufficient. Indicators with finer graduations are used more for parts that have been ground for checking squareness and flatness, as well as run out on round parts, but you'll find them way too twitchy on parts that don't have a nice smooth finish. Usually, indicators with finer graduations will have shorter ranges of motion, but again, it's hard to make sweeping generalizations here. My tenths indicator only has eight thousandths of travel, whereas my half thousandths in a rapid actually has sixty thousandths, double that of most half thousandth dial test indicators. Likewise, this relatively fine half thousandths drop type indicator actually has an entire inch of travel. You can easily find thousandths indicators with travels anywhere from two inches to a quarter of an inch. Which one you choose really depends on the end use. Are you using it to measure the travel on a machine? Grab one with as much travel as possible. Maybe you're dialing in a part on a four-jaw chuck. You don't need a ton of travel for that. What about measuring parts on a comparator stand? That depends a lot on the part and the features you want to check. You've got lots of options available to you. I hope this clears things up for you, Nelson Wahite. If any of you have questions or topics you'd like to see me cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments section below. Indicate in that like and subscribe button if you think I've earned it, and please consider supporting the channel over on Patreon like the wonderful people you see on your screen right now, including my newest patron, Aaron Freeman. You might want to check out these other videos as well. On the right, I have a playlist of all of my quick machining tips. On the top left, I have my most recent video, and on the bottom left, there's a video showing how to use comparator stands. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.